Uh, let's kind of work a little bit backwards, I guess, and we'll we'll hit on Far Cry next, guys. So not as much Far Cry as I thought we would see. So, Stephen, you were probably a little more right here than, than I was. So we did see, I thought, a pretty effective, like, cinematic um, with the, the villain, the main villain in the game, and how effective he is just kind of as that cold and calculating bad guy, right? Um, anything new to stand out here for you? I mean, I, I know we were all kind of sold on Far Cry at first, so what uh, thoughts, guys, on on Far Cry 6 and what we saw here? Uh, I, you know, it was just like a cinematic trailer kind of touching a little bit more in depth on the bad guy, um, and there was definitely a reason for that, and we'll talk about it in a second. Um, but I do, I do like seeing more of um, Giancarlo, uh, Esposito's like villain because I think he's gonna be one of the better ones in the series. I I thought Ford's villain, who I'm blanking on the name of, um, even Pagan Men. Yeah, there we go. Pagan was kind of eh, and definitely didn't love Far Cry Five. Seth Rollins. Villain. Yeah, Seth Rollins. Yeah. Um, like not that I didn't want to like absolutely like shoot him in the face. I just he didn't think he was intriguing. <laughs> uh, but Voss yeah. was very interesting. Uh, and I think we're going to get closer to Voss than than the other two. Um, I, I thought the trailer was really cool. I'm very excited for this game. And I mm-hmm. I think I'm going to stick with this one way longer than Far Cry 5. Because yeah. all I hope is with Far Cry is they take those missions that, like, that pull you when you're just roaming the open world. And then all of a sudden you get, you know, brought into a mission without doing anything like I, that's kind of annoying to me i like being able to start it on my own i hope they got mm, rid of that okay. feature but mm-hmm. we didn't learn anything new except for a little bit more about the villain and more more about the villain's um son because that was yes. yeah that was kind of the, the whole thing like the son's kind of fighting against the father a little bit yeah here. Um, so I have a feeling the sun's going to play a role in the revolution at some point, right? Yeah, as I, almost, we go. I almost wonder if you're going to get a chance to maybe play as him a little bit. And I mm-hmm. feel That's like what I was kind of kept yeah. that under wraps, and I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Do we know who we do play as in this game yet? Yeah, the girl. The, the girl? Yes, because you okay. saw her in some gameplay stuff from the, the trailer from a week ago. Cool, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, the villain, I think one thing they talked about, one of the devs um, that I 100% agree with is what makes a great villain a lot of the time is, you know, that the fact that this person is like the, the normal, seemingly normal person that can make you believe everything they're saying. Um, They truly believe that they're in the right. They don't see themselves as the villain. And, and uh, I, I feel that with this, with this villain here in, in Far Cry uh, six. And I think that gets, you know, and that, that was what appealed to me and about the Far Cry five villain as well. I probably don't, I'm not as down on him as Steven is, but I get what you're getting at. I think, I, I think part of it is that it was a little disappointing because there's so much potential there for a character like that. And maybe they didn't hit it all, but what are your thoughts on what we saw from Far Cry 6? I, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I think the trailer just kind of reiterated everything we already knew, right? It's like Anton Castillo is is a bad guy. And I, I think it's really funny that like, they specifically use the word villain loads throughout that little showcase here, but like John Carlos Pizzito was adamant that he wasn't a villain the other day. <laughs> but I guess like you say, that's that's the that's the charm of Far Cry villains, right? They're like yep. uh, they are charismatic and they are believable, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. like you can arguably see why people get behind them. Like they have that charismatic dictatorship that people, you know, rally behind, I suppose. Is is a real thing. It's this uh you know, they're believable, they're interesting. They're dynamic. I'm excited to see more, but uh, like I, you know, was there anything new? Yeah, it was just more. Don't call Esposito taking the spotlight. I mean, yeah, and I mean, we know this game's coming soon in October, and that's you know a theme that we're going to talk about here because we still have to learn some release dates today. Mm. But you know, I think uh, yeah, I mean, I'm with you on the the effectiveness uh, what the villain can be. I I think if you it's it's an effective enough charismatic enough villain where if you were to, you know, maybe pull the citizens of Yara, I bet you'd get a decent amount percentage wise that completely support him, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, and 
Uh, a couple comments coming in about Far Cry. Um, like, oh, they uh, somebody loves the Far Cry 5 villain. Um, like the religious cult aspect. Uh, Joseph Seaton, the brothers and sister, just worked really well. And yeah, I mean, there's the religious cult aspect's awesome. And that's what drew me to the idea of Far Cry. Um, games like this, for me anyway, the, the villain's always much more intriguing than the protagonist. So if it's a good villain and it's well done, then it's it's going to keep me, and that's true for any sort of media, whether it's a uh, you know film or book or whatever. Um, so we did learn more about DLC here in season pass for Far Cry Six. Hey, I'm gonna do you want to chat about that real quick? Yeah, so like they showed the season pass, and we get to you know explore a bit more about the villains from past Far Cry games. So we get to play as Vast Pagan Min and Joseph Seed is his name from Far Cry Five. Yep. Um, I thought that was a really cool way to go. I mean, it's definitely unique, right? And it brings back fan favorite characters as well. Like everybody loves Voss, so like that's that's an instant win in Ubisoft's book. And that's that's going to go down really well. I yeah, hope we they do them well. I... Yeah, I'm really intrigued by like the story they're trying to tell with those. Like the setting looked really like trippy, like really reality bending. I just have no idea what they're going for. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure either. It looked, yeah, it, was, it almost really like a bizarre. dream, a dream world type <laughs> yeah. of thing, almost. Yeah, you know? like so. Yeah, you you better not make Joseph Seed relatable. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I'm interested in playing as Voss and Pagan Min though a little bit more, um, and learning kind of the backstory, especially Voss, because um, obviously a lot of people uh, have been theorizing that Diego is Voss because uh, of the scars or whatever lineup. Mm, I think okay. that's been debunked. Um, but who doesn't love a good little theory, uh, especially while we wait for the game to come out? Um, yeah. But I, I think that's a cool little season pass. It's weird that they're doing it one uh, that doesn't include content for the like the game itself. That it, it takes you back to previous games. Um, so yep. that's an interesting thing. But I mean, it's interesting. Uh, and on top of that, you do get Far Cry Three Blood Dragon, which I assume will be yep. remastered or remade. Which was maybe. hugely popular. Uh, it yeah. was very popular. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's all part of the season pass. And guys, just general thoughts on a season pass. Like, I know we're, I think, I feel like the industry is moving away from that model overall, but some, you know, are still, in, you know, kind of employing that that model uh, with content. Um, just general thoughts on the the idea of a season pass here. Are you okay with it? Uh, I'm fine with it. Like, it's, okay. you know, it's standard pro. Well, it was standard practice for a long time. And anything that gets Ubisoft like $120 instead of $60, right. you know, it's a big win. Right. Yeah. Well, for that, <laughs> I'm sure. They can claw your money during the hype train and then right. release some mediocre DLC. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've definitely been burned by that one before with them. But I mean, the, oh, the I premise does have. seem cool. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure we'll be able to pick up the season pass like a bit cheaper after launch anyway. So Ubisoft games always go on sale over Christmas and stuff. So yep. oh, for sure. don't pick it up on launch. You'll probably get yep. Far Cry 6 Gold Edition for like 20, 30 bucks cheaper. Yep. Yeah, just wait till the Christmas sale. Always. Exactly. So I, I at least like that they they told us up front two of the things basically that are going to be in season pass. So they're being pretty pretty transparent about what we can expect, mm-hmm. which uh, is good. See, I definitely thought that each villain is going to be its own like DLC for the season pass, mm-hmm. and that I is felt the, the same like total of the DLC for the season. Pass. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. So I mean, then we'll have to see how much it costs, right? Uh, I think it all it usually comes down to like, is it worth the price they're asking you to pay? So, yeah. 